Hi! Welcome to Pollen Morphology Training Part 1, Shapes and Orientation. Today, I will be providing you with some of the information needed to properly describe pollen grains based on their morphological characteristics. Let's talk about pollen morphology. In this video, we will be taking the time to discuss some basic information, such as, what is pollen? We will also discuss some basic pollen morphology, such as grain orientation and shape, along with some examples. As you can see in these images, pollen grains can vary greatly in their appearance and morphological characteristics. What is pollen? Plants produce pollen in order to reproduce. Pollen grains are the male sex cells of seed-bearing plants. They can be dispersed for pollination in a variety of ways, such as by wind distribution or by insects and animals. A pollen grain's wall is made up of a robust material called sporopollenin, which is adapted to resist environmental stresses such as temperature or humidity. Pollen grains can have a variety of diverse shapes and structural characteristics that can help us identify them. Here's an example of a Malvasi pollen grain. The image on the top left was taken with light microscopy. The image on the top right was taken with scanning electron microscopy. On the bottom is a Z-Stack video. This can be a helpful tool for palynologists. A Z-Stack video is composed of approximately 100 or more images of a pollen grain at varying planes of focus combined to provide a 3D representation of the grain. This gives the user the ability to look at the pollen grain as if they were looking at it through a microscope. Pollen grains can vary greatly in shapes and sizes. Light microscopy images provide a two-dimensional representation of the grain. Z-Stack videos and SEM images can help the user visualize the three-dimensional shape of the grain. Here is another example. This is an amaranthaceae pollen grain. The image at the top left was taken with light microscopy. The image at the top right was taken with scanning electron microscopy. Below you can see the Z-Stack video. Videos such as these can help the user gain a better understanding of the morphological characteristics of the grain. Pollen grains generally develop as a formation of multiple cells on the anther of a plant. As the grains mature, they may then be classified into different dispersal types. Grains typically occur in one of the three types of dispersal formations listed below. Monads are single cell pollen grains. Here's an example of a monad. Tetrads are pollen grains comprised of four cells. Here's an example of a tetrad. Polyads consist of more than four cells. Here's an example of a polyad. Now let's talk about how to properly identify a pollen grain's orientation. When looking at a pollen grain, researchers need to be able to understand and identify which angle of the grain they are seeing. Are you viewing the grain from the top or bottom, which are considered to be the poles? Or are you seeing the grain from the side, which has the equator visible? Those orientations are known as polar and equatorial. To help better understand polar and equatorial orientation, let's use the example of an American football. Imagine holding a football in a position where the lacing is directly visible. If this football were a pollen grain, this would be an equatorial view. In the center of the screen is a cartoon representation of an equatorial view. To the right is an anacardiaceae grain in its equatorial orientation. Now imagine holding a football so that you are looking directly at the end. This would be a polar view. In the center of the screen is a cartoon representation of a polar view. To the right is an anacardiaceae grain in its polar orientation. Now let's discuss pollen measurements. Measuring a pollen grain can provide useful information. 
When measuring a grain, you need to take into account its orientation. Both polar and equatorial measurements can be done while the grain is in its equatorial orientation. For the polar measurement, the grain should be measured from one pole to the other. For the equatorial measurement, the grain should be measured across the equator. Remember, be careful when measuring your pollen grains. You cannot get a polar measurement from a polar view. In this case, you would actually be measuring the equatorial measurement because you would be measuring across the diameter of the equator of the grain. Now let's talk about polar shapes. Correctly classifying a grain based on its shape can serve as a useful identification tool. These are the variations of polar shape. Now here are some examples. Here is a triangular concave grain. Here is a triangular straight grain. Here we have a quinquanangular grain. And here are a few examples of lobate grains. As you can see, the number of lobes present may vary. Now let's look at equatorial shapes. These are the variation for equatorial shape. Now here are some examples. Here is an oblate grain. Here we have a subprolate grain. Here is a perprolate grain. And here we have a rhombic tall grain. The presence of an aperture on a grain can help the user differentiate between the various polar and equatorial shapes. Being able to correctly classify a grain based on its shape and orientation is an important part of pollen morphology. It can help ensure a reliable and accurate morphological description. Join us next time for part two, apertures, for more information. Thanks for joining us. This concludes part one of our pollen morphology training series.